Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Watching 30 days of Photoshop. All right, cool. Welcome to 30 days of Photoshop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to change any color using hue saturation and color balance. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, as a part of our 30 days of Photoshop series, we're gonna show you how to change any color using adjustment layers like hue saturation and color balance. Now, if you haven't already done so, be sure to sign up for 30 days of Photoshop. It's absolutely free. You'll get a calendar where you can follow along, bonus goodies, as well as all the sample images you need to follow along with these 30 days. All right, we got a great video. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here's our sample image. And again, you can download this on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. My goal for this photo, really cool image, is to take these orange colors that are in the back like these kind of like reddish oranges and shift them a little bit to match the clothing of my subject. Cause we have a lot of like really nice color going on, but it's like, what would it look like if all of this was basically the same color? And this is something you can do with a hue saturation adjustment layer. You can also switch the color of something like this white wall here by using a feature called colorize. So to get started, let's go ahead and grab our hue saturation adjustment layer. We'll go to layer, down to new adjustment layer and over to hue slash saturation and hit okay. So here's a little quick tour of our hue saturation adjustment layer. This is one of the most powerful and useful adjustment layers in Photoshop. So right up here, you have three different sliders. You have a hue slider and clicking and dragging this will just change the hue to anything that you want. So of course, if I wanted my subject to wear a blue shirt, we could have that happen very easily. Let's go bring that down to zero. We can adjust the saturation of any of the colors in my image, going all the way down to a black and white photo. And we can adjust the lightness of my image. And of course you can dial this into specific colors so it doesn't just affect everything. Now we also have a function called colorize. And if I hit colorize, it literally colors everything in the image to the exact color that I choose in these sliders. So both colorize and the standard view are incredibly powerful. We're going to show you how to use both. Let's go ahead and hit this reset icon. It just brings it right back to normal. Now, as of now, we've been affecting the hue saturation of basically all the colors in our image. But where this tool gets a lot more powerful is where you can choose the color ranges where you'd like to affect. So here's how that works. Right up here where it says master, we're gonna go ahead and click there and you're gonna see a drop down list of different colors. So the first step is to go ahead and click on a color that's similar to what you want to edit. So I'm gonna click on reds. Now, as I adjust my reds, let's go ahead and take our hue slider and bring this back and forth and see what it's affecting. So definitely affecting reds, but it's also like, it's affecting my background, it's affecting my subject's skin, it's affecting clothing. It's affecting quite a bit in this image, a little bit too much, right? Because I really just want to change these background colors. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to bring this down to zero. And I need a way to refine this a little bit better. Like I want to say, hey, just edit these colors. So we're going to do that with an eyedropper. So let's go ahead and click on our eyedropper right here. And I'm going to go over to this TV and then click on the TV. And you can see what I did that. Keep your eye right over here, by the way. When I did that, it shifted these sliders down here. So let's click in a few different places. We'll go over here, right on the background, on our subject's face, shirt. You can see that this continues to move around wherever I click. So here's how this works. Basically, you get to target your color with this eyedropper. That's the top slider, the color you choose, and the bottom slider is what we're gonna turn it into. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm gonna just, again, click on this orange TV, and I'm gonna adjust my hue. So we're just gonna push this to the right. Now you can see it's still affecting other colors, right? It's affecting my subject's skin and her clothing. The reason is, is we have this little area that shows what's gonna be affected. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out to make it just a little bit more uh, easy to read. So we've used our eyedropper, okay? There we go. We've selected this color and now I've shifted the hue to the right. But what's happening right down here is 
I'm actually shifting a range of colors. It's not just that exact color. So this little graph represents the range. So the interior part of the graph where it's light gray, these are the colors that are absolutely going to be affected. Now, as it fades out here to the left and to the right, this is kind of like a fading effect that makes it a little bit more subtle. So it's not just like a hard stop, like this color gets changed and then the next color right next to it doesn't get changed at all. It'll fade it out to make it look more natural. Now you can alter this very easily. So what we're gonna do is, is bring in the amount of color that we're actually affecting. So I'm gonna click right here in this dark gray area and drag this in, okay? And you can see it's actually going to decrease the amount of area that's gonna get colored. There we go. I'm gonna click over here and drag this in as well. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side and the same thing on this side. Now you're seeing changes in the, in the image as well, but basically what I'm saying is affect less color. So I'm bringing those lines in to have it hone in on more specific color values. So now what I can do is actually, I can actually take this little uh, gray area, the light gray area in the center, and I can start moving this to the left and the right and see how it affects colors in my image. So on the right here, you can see it's starting to affect quite a bit of my of the shirt of my subject. And as I move this over to the left, right about here, you can see, okay, now it's mostly affecting our background. It's affecting our subject shirt a little bit, but mostly the background color. So this is actually perfect. Where it is now is exactly where we want it to be. We've talked about adjustment layers earlier in this series. All of our adjustment layers come with layer masks. So if there's ever a case, like in this case, for instance, where yes, it did affect the background, but it's also affecting our subject a little bit, all you have to do is use your layer mask to make it invisible in that area. So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna click on our layer mask here, and I'm gonna hit B for my brush tool, and we're gonna paint with black as our foreground color, because I want to hide this effect wherever I paint. Okay, because I don't, I don't want to affect my subject's skin color, right? Like she'd, you know, I want her to look natural. I, I'm trying to match the background colors to the colors of my subject's clothing. That's my goal here, to create a kind of a cohesive color palette with this image. So I don't necessarily want my subject to change. I definitely don't want her skin to change any color because, you know, it just looks very unnatural. Um, and I don't want her color of her clothing changing too because I'm trying to match the background color to her clothing. So just painting black on my layer mask, I'm able to hide this effect over top of her skin. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So let's just turn this layer off and on and see what effect we've made. Looking pretty good. Now, this green color doesn't exactly match what's going on here. My whole goal is to get the background color to match my subject's clothing. So how do we change that? It's actually incredibly easy. We just go back into my hue saturation adjustment layer. So let's just click there. Now, if by, by chance you click off and then click back on with hue saturation adjustment layer, it might look like it is reset. Like it might look like, oh, I gotta do this over again. All you have to do is click on master and go down to, in this case, we chose to edit our reds, right? So just go down to your reds and here we go. You can see all of our changes are back. So everything is uh, basically saved within each of the color channels. So sometimes it might just take a little bit of remembering, but you can just go through them and be like, no, it wasn't that one. Okay, uh, look, yep, it was the reds. Okay, so now that we have our reds, we're honed in on the colors that we're gonna be editing. All I have to do is adjust my hue. And check this out, I can adjust this hue to whatever I want, but again, my goal is to match the clothing in the image. So let's go right about there and check that out. It matches pretty dang well. So at any time I can come in here and change this. Like I could make the clothes and the background this color. I can, I can do complementary colors if I want. It's very, very easy to do just adjusting your hue slider. Okay, well, I think those colors actually start to work pretty well together. So let's just turn this off and on and there we go. Pretty big difference, right? And again, if it's not exactly perfect, you can just make adjustments here very, very easily. But I think that's looking pretty good. So the next thing I wanna do is work on the wall to the right of our subject because it's just a like a, a white or gray wall at this point, but I want it to be that orange color. So we're gonna use the next feature of hue saturation to go ahead and colorize that wall. 
and that feature is called Colorize. So let's show you how to do it. For this, we're gonna to wanna to create a new hue saturation adjustment layer. So we'll go to layer, new adjustment layer, and hue saturation. There we are. And this time we click on Colorize. Now this is just gonna color everything in our image. So we have to use a layer mask. There's no changing of, you know, like from going from master, red, yellow, things like that. This just literally colors everything in your image. So it's important here to use your layer mask. To start off with, I'm gonna invert my layer mask because it's white, means the whole layer is visible. So I wanna invert it, which is gonna make it black, meaning the whole layer is gonna be invisible. So we'll hit Control or Command I to invert the layer mask. Now I'm just gonna paint white on my layer mask. So just hit your brush tool. So hit B for the brush tool. Okay, and then go ahead and just start painting white on your layer mask. I'll do it down here as well too, so we can get some of the color on that little baseboard too. There we go. And I'm just using a mouse and my brush tool here. Okay, so not really anything fancy. <laughs> very, very nice. Just basically using simple tools and a layer mask. Okay, so I layer mask that in, basically saying, okay, this is just the area I want to be affecting. But now my job is to change my hue, saturation, and lightness to try to match the wall on the left. So we'll start with our hue. I'm just gonna start by dr dragging this from the left to the right. You can see here, this is a little too red, a little bit too green. Something like that's looking okay. Uh, maybe I'll just bring my saturation up and maybe our lightness down a little bit. There we go. And start editing this a little bit more. Oh, look at that, it's starting to look pretty good, right? There we go. And right about there is looking pretty good. Let's just bring our lightness down and maybe our saturation up just a tiny bit. There we go. So you can also just click here on these numbers and use your up and down arrows if you wanna make just really nice subtle adjustments. But I think that's actually looking pretty good. So literally we took that wall and we colorized it to look like this, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and colorize down here as well. Right, I'm just obsessed with this color, so I want it everywhere. Uh, I think that's looking really nice. Let's go ahead, maybe just work on our lightness a little bit. There we go. I'm not trying to necessarily make them look, look like they're the same wall, but pretty much the same color. Okay, so there's the before and the after uh, looking pretty good. So we do have one little area right here in the center, which you could totally leave that if you wanted. Uh, what I'm gonna do is create a new layer right above the two, and then you can just use your spot healing brush tool to just paint right over this little crease here. There we go. And the crease is completely gone. I mean, I do realize it's a corner of a room, so there should be some kind of a crease, but in this case, I just kind of wanted to reduce that a little bit there. All right, well, there we have it. Let's just turn those off, and we can see there's our before and our after. It looks pretty dang cool. All of the colors in the background are now matching the colors of my subject's clothing. And of course you could do this the opposite. If you wanted to match your subject's clothes to the background, you could do this. If you wanna change the color of a car, for instance, you could do this as well. Basically, when you target a color, it gives you the ability to change it to any other color in the spectrum. So all that was done with hue, saturation, adjustment layers. Now it's time to move into color balance, which is used for color toning your photograph. It'll allow you to put colors into your shadows midtones and highlights. So let's go back into our photo. We're gonna to go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and over to color balance. And here we can see we have an option to edit our shadows, midtones, and highlights. So let's go ahead and start off with our shadows. Now, I like this slider because it makes it very easy what you're doing, either pushing your image more towards cyan or more towards red. You're gonna go more towards magenta or green, yellow or blue. And of course you can choose between your shadows, mid tones and highlights. So I think this is actually a very straightforward way of coloring your images. Now, in this case, I wanna put a little bit of blue into our shadows and maybe warm up our highlights just a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to our shadows and we're gonna pull a little bit of cyan into the shadows and a little bit of blue. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, sometimes your shadows will darken your photo up a little bit much. And in this case, I think it is a little bit too much. 
So I'm going to see what it looks like when we do this in our midtones. So let's just hit that reset button there. We'll go to midtones and pull in some cyans and blues into our midtones. There we go. I like that a little bit better. Okay, maybe we'll put a little bit more blues into the midtones and some green. Fantastic. And then we'll go into our highlights and I'm going to pull some reds and some yellows into our highlights. So we're just kind of playing with a bit of the color here and making it, there we go, making it kind of stand out a little bit by adding complementary colors into the shadows and highlights. So let's go ahead and turn this off and back on. And you can see it just has a little bit more of like a color punch to it. The shadows are a little bit cooler and my highlights are a little bit warmer. And of course you can go in here and change these values at any point in time. Make our highlights a little bit more on the yellow side. So this is something I recommend keeping relatively subtle. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my opacity down, maybe to about 60% or so. There we go. I personally have a tendency to overdo when I color things, but I think this looks fantastic. So color balance is something that I recommend doing at the very end. If you wanna change any colors existing in your photos, that's where a hue saturation adjustment layer comes in. And if you wanna blanket change a color, that's where Colorize comes in, which is built into hue saturation. Thank you so much for watching 30 Days of Photoshop. We've got more great tutorials on the way. Join us tomorrow for learning the amazing power of the brush tool in Photoshop. Thanks again. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.